Hey there, listeners. You may notice that I sound a bit different than your normal host. That's because my name is Scott Bolin. I had the pleasure of appearing here on Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio back on episode number 220. Well, I must have done something right because I'm back. Specifically, I'm back here alongside our normal host, uh, Jeremy Lesniak, as well as Jared Wilson of Martial Thoughts Podcast for part two of this roundtable discussion episode titled, The Crud Martial Art is Here and How to Deal with It. You heard me correctly. This is the second half of a two-part episode I have had the honor to work on with Jeremy and Jared. Don't worry, though, if you haven't already listened to part one, I know just where to point you to. The first part appears on Marshall Thoughts Podcast. You can find that podcast in various places, but the easiest place to find it is www.martialartspodcasts.com. Dot com. Uh, there are no dashes or underscores there to make it complicated for you. Once you're there, scroll down and you will find the link to uh, the Martial Thoughts podcast right there. During the process of brainstorming and creating these episodes, Jared Wilson and I started talking about the effect martial arts movies has had on the public perception of martial artists. Jared and I decided we wanted to go a little deeper into that thought process. So we have published two articles on Martial Journal that explore the martial arts movies uh, that represent martial artists in both positive and negative lights. I think you'll enjoy them, and I look forward to hearing from you about your thoughts on what we came up with. To find these articles, all you have to do is type in www.marshalljournal.com and you'll be able to read both of them. There will also be links provided in the show notes for you. These articles are in addition to all of the other great content on Marshall Journal by the wonderful contributors we have there. Well, I don't want to delay this any longer. We will pick back up here with the second half of this episode and dive into more of the comments and questions martial artists hear from non-martial artists. I hope you enjoy. Isn't that isn't that like some of the biggest parts of self-defense in general? Yeah. The only way you win a fight is to not have one. Yeah. What's what's uh, what's the line from Mr. Miyagi? Best block not be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the best block. That's the best self defense is just don't be there. Right. Right. And and I think it's you know, a lot of times and, and I've you know, I have plenty of friends that don't train. So when we look at a circumstance, you know, let's go here, let's go down this street, let's do this stupid thing that we shouldn't be doing. They're operating from a perspective of it is unlikely for something to happen. I'm operating from the perspective of I'm going to make sure nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be safe. It doesn't mean I'm going to hold myself up in a panic room, but it means if I have an alternative that gets me to my goal of, you know, getting to X place in the city or finding a a bar to go to on a Friday night that will be fun to hang out at, you know, there are options and I'm willing to be conservative. One of the, one of my mantras you can be overprepared or underprepared. You will never be perfectly prepared. And I will always err on the side of over preparation. I feel and, like go oh ahead. go ahead. Go no, no no. Well, I was gonna say I feel like this one, you know, this one it kind of seems to me like if I'm imagining where this particular comment or question comes from, it's you know, kind of like a oh my gosh, you're so your martial arts knowledge must be so amazing type of thing, like a, a little bit of a mysticism or an awe place where mm-hmm. I think this one comes from. And, and I wonder if, and we've, we've kind of alluded to it, but pop culture, sure, pop culture of martial arts. And, and when was the last time we had a really good martial arts movie that didn't involve extraordinary amounts of gore, blood, violence, you know, 
and, and not that I don't like that because I love to watch those. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm putting on my my you know my responsible guy you know my responsible martial artist gi here, yeah, that doesn't. I don't know that that makes us look great. Yeah, it's the Steven Seagal going into the CD bar to go <laughs> exactly you know, look for somebody. It's <laughs> exactly what I was thinking about, by the way. That's awesome. <laughs> it's all those Steven Seagal and John Paul Van Damme movies, and it gave me all the all, everything I needed to know about martial arts. And then I started, and then it it wasn't the same thing. Mm. You, know, you know, as a kind of an the awareness part that we were talking about, there was actually an instance where. Uh, at the time, it was just my wife and I. We didn't have our kid yet. We walked into uh, a popular seafood restaurant chain, <clears throat> and <laughs> and it didn't feel right. Something was off about it, and I said, we're not staying here. And I, I took her, and we left. And by the time we got home, uh, somebody was shot in the restaurant. And I, I, that's, I, I can't oh, explain wow. it. Yeah, there was that. It was a weird vibe in the restaurant. So we left. Wow, that's uh, that's the Spidey sense, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's that's Spidey sense right there. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it happens. So, and it does happen, and I think it happens more often than people want to admit. You know, we we've worked so hard in society to downplay mm -hmm. that it's. I I, th I think the number one element of self defense is is as you, we've talked about awareness, and I think being open to that whether you want to call it six cents or whatever, I think is, is crucial. When, when I, when I, um, when I teach my students, I, I, of course we, we do Kempo techniques and we talk about why we do it this way or why, what's good about this technique, what's bad about this technique and what could you do from here? And I, and I, and I ask questions and I encourage them to free think outside of the technique, you know? Um, but the biggest thing I talk about, is trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's and this is what we're this is what we're all saying in our own versions of it is we I, I I don't know if we've been trained to do this by society or if it's just something that's the 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 statistical uh the low statistical pop probability of you actually having real violence in your life. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're all out hunting and gathering anymore and literally life and death. It's not the walking dead, which is actually a, you know, it's interesting how they present it. Cause it's not really about zombies. If you ever watch the show, mm -hmm. it's about who's left over and what they're willing to do to survive. We don't live like that. And I feel like telling, trying to refocus someone on their instincts, trust your instincts. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. Just listen to it. And that's hard. It can be it, very hard. You know, the one way you can phrase it is we've had millions and millions of years of learning social clues. Most of them are unconscious. So we've also had a couple hundred years of pretending that we're all society and, and, and nice and that's trying to override those millions of years of social clues. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's see. Now we have – it's kind of a, a, a two-question. Um, the way it was presented to me was the one followed <clears throat> exactly past the other. Have you actually been in a fight? Well, then how do you know it works? Mm. Assuming you said no, by the way. <laughs> I answer no, because the only scraps I got into were in elementary school. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that I've been able to defuse stuff. And, you know, I'll answer honestly. I don't. I have no <clears throat> idea how I'd do in a fight. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't know. Aikido has taught me to run away with skill. But that's kind of the same thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, if if I don't do martial arts, I don't know how I'm going to do in a fight. True. Unless yeah. I get into a fight. I mean, this is, it's to me, that has 
very little to do with people are under the, these delusions that martial arts is about fighting, right? And that's where those mm -hmm. questions come from. Absolutely. But I think that the majority of people that don't train know at least a little that martial arts is about at least more than fighting. So again, we have the people that ask these questions. They're trying to poke the bear. They're trying to evoke a response that I'm just not willing to engage on. Yeah, I can't. I, uh, that was really good, by the way. That was really good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, you know, it's kind of a conundrum. It's, you know, uh, no, I, I trained with the intent to never be in a fight, and I hope I'm never in a fight. My sincerest hope is that I never have to use it, right. which doesn't make sense because we think, Think of value, money for, you know, receive services and, you know, well, you're training to fight, you know, or, or training how to handle yourself in a fight. And then your whole goal is to never be, to never use the thing you paid X number of dollars for. I think it's, you know, I think there's just like a, a that doesn't, that doesn't jive. I mean, you know, if you spend a bunch of money on TV, you want, the best TV you can get. You spend a bunch of money on couches. You want the best ones you can get. But when it comes to this, it's like we spend a bunch of money to hopefully never, ever, ever, ever use the product, quote unquote product, that we are paying for. So I wonder but, if it's kind of that kind of thing. See, I'd come back and talk about most of the benefits of martial arts are the side benefits, the non-combative ones, if you will. Um, a lot of people come into martial arts because they like they'll verbalize that they want self-defense, but that's not really the reason that they're there. Whether it's, uh, you know, the social group aspect, whether it's the confidence aspect, it's easy to say, I want to learn how to defend myself. But really what you want is all these other things that martial arts gives you. Like Spidey sense. Right. <laughs> yes, I absolutely want Spidey Sense. If you find it, if you can <laughs> bottle it up and you can sell it, you will be quite rich indeed. I'm not sharing. <laughs> Come on, man. keeping it all to myself. That's that is not cool. No, it's not. But you know what? I live out in the woods. I need to keep me safe from the bears. Actually, you do. <laughs> and and uh, don't forget Sasquatch. He's nah, out there. Sasquatch and I are cool. All right, cool. Um. <laughs> You're not teasing him with jack links, are you? No, no, there is no, no, as a, um, he gets angry. He does. He does. I like those commercials. Well. Feed him a Snickers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll turn into Joe Pesci or something. <laughs> oh gosh. There's somebody shorter than all three of us. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey, all this tells us that marketing works guys. Okay. All right. So, um, this one, I think it, I think it hashes up some territory we've already got into a little bit. But are you any good? We've kind of delved into that one. Just, eh, I don't know. I'm okay, I guess. I don't know. I don't do it to my, be good. I do it to have fun. My uh, answer, my like answer that. is probably not. <laughs> uh, well, well. Are you any good against a resisting opponent or? <laughs> no, I'm do Aikido. We don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I've, 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 you've, I've, I've been listening to a few of yours with your, uh, uh, with, uh, Aikido based guests. And so I love the jokes, by the way, <laughs> the Aikido jokes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is one that's obvious. You, you just, there's no, any, any affirmative is a bad answer. It just invites, you know, invites potential problem or whatever, and just diffusing and walking away, or 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 go, yeah, no, I'm not that good. Now, kind of on a continuous of some of these we've been talking about, mm. um, have you guys ever where it escaped in your workplace that you're a martial artist, and then that person goes and goes, hey, don't mess with him, he's a badass who does martial arts, and you're like, oh crap. That's the head slapping one. That's when yeah. you face palm. <laughs> um yeah i i haven't worked for anybody full time it's, it's 2002 let's say you cheat so yeah yeah you totally cheat 
Yeah, I'm not the I'm not a good one to ask this question. Well, my my uh, I've worked at my company for almost five years now, and they recently brought up that you know there've been some uh, incidents with um, some of our clinicians doing home health. So we go into houses, um, you know, a lot of times, quite often by ourselves. Very rarely are two of us together at the same time, unless it's a pre-planned thing. And you know, there were a couple. Mm -hmm. mm, you know, somewhat tense incidences. And so it, it got everybody, you know, some of the, the higher up people in the office thinking about, well, maybe we need to start bringing in self-defense and whatever. And, you know, maybe we need to, you know, have some extra classes on Saturdays or Thursday nights or whatever to, to teach self-defense. And I'm kind of sitting in the back <laughs> uh, while this meeting is going, while they're talking about this and I'm sitting in the back and my first thought is, Okay, do I tell them what I do or not? Yeah. And I, I mulled it over for a little while. I did not burst up and, you know, like the kid who knows the answer all the time in class or anything like that. No, I I, I thought about it for a little while. You know, I rolled it around. I, I'd like to say I probably don't remember much of the next 30 minutes of that meeting, but um, I was too busy thinking about whether I wanted to say anything about it. But I did, I did approach my my boss and I, you know, told him what I did and said, I'd be willing to, you know, it's for my, this is for my coworkers, you know? Right. Right. And, you know, I don't want anybody to get hurt and I like to teach. I do physical therapy. Basically I'm a teacher by, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't do the, I can't do the squats for him. You know, <laughs> I just show them how to do it and I show them what to do. And then we progress and things like that. Not much different than teaching what I you know, what I teach to my students in martial arts, it's start them out at the basics and progress and progress and progress. So I, I, I finally did, but it, but it was not, it was really one of those moments where I was kind of surprised at how hesitant I was to speak up about what I do. I, like I said, I've been there five years almost, and very few people know that I, that I do martial arts. I don't really talk about it a lot unless I'm in those circles. Maybe that's maybe that's left over from middle school and high school and, you know, uh, <laughs> a couple other jobs I've had that were, you know, very macho, you know, kind of settings. So that that, you know, maybe that that survival instinct is still kicking around in there somewhere. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of staying out of this one because I just I don't know. I don't feel like I have a lot to contribute on it. Jimmy, just get a job. OK. So we can, we can have I have a job. It just go get it. You know, it happens no. to involve me wearing. But you don't realize that this is his job. I, well, no, I know it's his job. I just want him to get a real job, like the rest of us. That has to. He has to show up and you know listen to other people tell him what to do and all that stuff. That's oh. literally what I do all day. I just don't do most of it. <laughs> oh gosh! All right, you know, you, like you said, you get to pick which twelve hours you work, right? Exactly. <laughs> You know, to take that to an extreme level, I'm in the middle of the should we arm teachers argument to yeah. take that to an even extremer level than what you're talking about. Can can we please not? Yeah. Can we just please? Can, I just I, I need I need a space where we're not talking about this issue. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, if you guys want to talk about it, I'll just I'll just go <laughs> make some no, tea and no, come no. back. That's I think that's a conversation. My brain hurts on different. it. That, that's a conversation for a different podcast. All righty. So um, got another one. This one was funny to me. I just I just can't see anything other than comedy um, in this one. But so can you break this? Of course, this being <laughs> maybe your dining room table or, you know, a significantly large chunk of concrete or, you know, whatever, because, the you know, the. The theme is is that all we do is break extraordinary surfaces constantly. See, now this one I will answer. Yes, <laughs> if it's not mine, <laughs> if it's not my dining table, I will absolutely break it. <laughs> I, sure, got a sledgehammer. It's exactly what I'll do. I'll say yes. Oh, really? Will you show me? Sure. And then I just start walking out to the garage. What are you doing? I'm gonna go find an axe or something. Where's your tool shed? <laughs> <laughs> but no i wanted you to break it with your hand why would i break it with my hand when i have a sledgehammer 
Martial arts isn't about being dumb. Yeah, you don't see lumberjacks going out into the woods and chopping it down with their hand, do you? Right. Take and lumberjacks really long use time. chainsaws now. They use the tool that is most efficient. Yeah. I I just this is one of those ones that I'm I, I just think's funny because I just know that this person has watched a lot of movies. You know. You can always whip out the Bruce Lee line, boards don't hit back. Right. <laughs> Tables don't hit back. You know, I don't that table didn't do anything to me. I ain't got no problem with that table. Unless you break your yep. head on it. Yeah, yeah. Jared, what about you? You 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 just you just whip the katana out and start hacking away? Yeah, I was gonna say I use swords. I cheat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cheating. That's more efficient. There you go. <laughs> that's exactly is it what cheating or is it whittling? About. You know, I, when you were talking about this, this weird image popped in my head of like three karate people being attacked by Groot and they're just going, yes, it finally works. <laughs> have you seen have you not seen that far side comic? No, well, Scott. What, what, no. OK, what, what are we so this about? is this is like my favorite one. And it's from, I mean, it's, it's got to be from the 80s. I and love Farsight Comics. So it's, in, for anybody that hasn't seen it, I'm sure there are some of you out there nodding and, and chuckling because you've seen it too. And it's a martial arts school and there's, you know, half a dozen people and they're doing some kind of partner, you know, block punch drill. And there's a window and the window is a good chunk of the frame. And outside of the window, this alien ship has landed. And the caption says... Finally, because out the ramp of this spaceship are these aliens with a torso made of brick and legs and arms <laughs> made of boards. That is awesome. And, and there's, they're just watering it and, and they're looking out the window and it just, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> that is awesome. We should, we should find it and add it in the show notes. That has to go in the show notes. <laughs> Hell, I'm going to make a poster of that. Because that that might be my that could go on my profile picture for a little while. <laughs> All righty. So um, this one, this one uh, is definitely well. It is derogatory in nature. I wrote down the word derogatory, but um, <laughs> you look like a insert whatever derogatory word that you want to doing that oh yeah i remember that one yeah yeah you and me talked about that one yeah um tee it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one um a listener actually wrote to me about that they direct messaged me uh and then i spread it to 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 scott to put it in here and it was a a sexual orientation derogatory line. Mm -hmm. And that, honestly, I have never encountered that. So that one floored me. Um, I, I don't know what to say on that one at all. Um, I've become so desensitized to comments like that. You don't have a last name, <laughs> Lesniak, and not move past that really quickly. Uh, they got really creative in school to the point where I thought it was funny. <laughs> but no. I years ago, I accidentally stumbled on what I still believe to be the best response to someone who makes a comment like that. And it takes a, a, a great deal of self-confidence. But this worked really well. I, was, I, I ended up out at a bar with a, with a couple friends. And, you know, I, I had... You know, admittedly, I just bought this new winter jacket and I liked it and I was wearing it. And it, it was, you know, it wasn't cold by Vermont standards. I'm sure to you guys, you know, you probably would have been wearing long johns and, and you know, three or four hats. But, you know, up here it was it was a little bit more mild. It was it was winter, but it was probably like 38. And so I'm wearing this winter coat. And around here, you don't generally wear a heavy winter coat when it's nearly 40 degrees. Yeah. But I was wearing, you know, I hadn't really thought ahead. I hadn't looked mm -hmm. at at the weather and I'm wearing this coat and I'm sitting there and this very large man comes over someone I, I don't know. I'd never met him. And it was clear from his demeanor that he was looking to <clears throat> assert himself. And he had, he had picked the smallest guy in a group of three people and 
And he looks at me and says, don't you think it's a little warm for that coat? You know, and he's looking for some kind of response. And I got so angry that I couldn't speak. And I'm just staring at him. Now, obviously, as, as an aside, listeners, you have probably picked up that there are some anger issues. I've, I've done a lot of work on those. Um, you know, this goes back uh, well over 10 years. And I just stared at him. Because I, I couldn't say anything. There were things I wanted to say, and, and for years later, I thought of things that I wanted to say. But what I've found, and, and, and the point I'm at now, and the reason this is relevant, is not saying anything was the th- only thing he hadn't expected. He was ready for a fight. He was ready for me to defend myself with words. He was ready for me to make some kind of verbal attack back. What he wasn't ready for was me to make eye contact and just stare at him. In, admittedly, probably a little bit of a crazy way. And I have used that since. When there's nothing else to do, when there's nothing else to say, you don't have to take action. Yeah, I, wow. Yeah, I've, uh, while listening to you say that, took me back to more than a few times when I've had that exact same kind of, you're just so mad. You can't even talk. You're, I mean, like I, you know, like, as you're saying, I I remember that, you know, and you know, I could feel like the heat coming to my face, but I don't want to say paralyzed, but I'm just, I'm just stuck in that spot of, I'm mad that, they said whatever it was they said. And, you know, later on, like you said, you know, you always go, oh, gosh, I should have said this. I should have said this. I should have said this. I could have said that. But when you think about it, yeah, no, there was anything literally almost there's almost nothing you could have said that wouldn't have elevated it. Into a real. You know, a, a potentially physical encounter at that point. No, I no, that. That hits home. That hits home. Jared? <laughs> I don't know. I, um, I don't know if I got anything for that one. Um, I usually revor- resort to humor. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine, Mariano, who's actually been on the show, um, <laughs> he was wearing a... Plug. Yeah. I'll have, to, <laughs> I'll have to find the episode. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, yeah. He was wearing a, a samurai shirt, but it had the Japanese World War II battle flag in the in the shirt. And this old gentleman, who I'm assuming was a veteran of World War II, came up to him in the middle of the mall and said, son, that flag offends me. So Mariana looks at him and goes, why? What do you have against Turkey? <laughs> Completely playing off that he knew exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> oh i don't how did that end the guy doesn't it, yeah he kind of stared in disbelief and didn't quite know what to do so that gave mariano a chance to escape <laughs> that was slick i have to give credit there yeah it was pretty good because <laughs> he's trying to figure out whether he's that stupid or <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what else works really well i i did i did an episode on this um you know what works really well to get out of situations like that? Start picking your nose. <laughs> no, nobody I wants to talk to somebody who's going to pick who's going to pick their nose in front of other people. It is it is one of the most disarming things you can do. And if they don't leave, just you know, act like you're going to wipe it on them. It's 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 over. <laughs> you know, my instructor does that in a seminar on purpose to show you how people run away from that. Right. He'll, he'll sit there in the middle of the seminar, pretend like he's picking his nose, and as he's about to do a technique, go like he's going to wipe it on someone. And the guy stops. He's like, see what just happened there? Yeah, I, I got to say that'd work on me. That'd work <laughs> on me real good. I'd be like, all right, you know, this conversation, we're, I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm going to go over here now. <laughs> good luck finding the gold. <laughs> Why well, I never right. blow my nose. I always need ammunition. <laughs> That was classified as too much information. <laughs> it is also a too complete much. lie. 
<laughs> That's good to know. All right. So uh, let's see. We got a couple more here. Are your hands registered lethal weapons? The Barney Fife question, as I <laughs> in my mind. <clears throat> you can say, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like depending on, you know, if they're obviously joking, I could joke and say, oh, I'm still waiting for that certificate to come in the mail. You know, <laughs> that way, you know, when everybody's in on a joke, that's okay. But I don't, I don't know that I would get a serious version of that. Like that, that question sounds like a joke in, in and of itself. I let people know that that's not a real thing because some people think that that is genuinely a thing. That at black belt level, it's, you you have to file some kind of <laughs> license with the state. Um, yeah, look, just like a concealed weapons permit, you gotta you gotta go through the background checks. And no, you know, as martial artists, we can't even agree what a black belt means, let alone you know what the skill level should be. Let's not even get into age. <laughs> That's a rabbit hole right there. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Last one. So this is under the premise. Um, this one was, I think this one was one that was given to me. I don't know that you gave me this one, Jared. Um, but under the premise that someone's watching you do a kata or watching someone do a kata or a form or pumse. That won't work in a fight. It's not That's designed good, to. Yeah, good. That's not what its purpose is. Yeah, exactly. Running through tires doesn't score touchdowns. <laughs> but the ladder does, doesn't it? The ladder drill. <laughs> and that get touchdowns? Of course. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I just feel like it's like one of those things where, you know, and that's when you know you're like that kind of statement is is very indicative of someone who Okay, they yeah, they really don't understand even the basic concepts of martial arts. Akata is not it's uh, I mean, when I perform Akata, I tend to try to feel like I'm in a fight. Because it helps me to project more and be more aggressive and more, you know, have more presence and things like that. But I know it's not a fight. No one's going to ever attack. No, there's not going to be enough people to attack me in that particular order in that particular way, <laughs> unless it's in a movie, which that's different. No, you remember my friend Mariano with the the quick humor lines. I cannot forget him. We um, for our black belt for a sword, we had to design our own kata. So, <laughs> as a joke, he got up there and goes, "I call this one." 22 ninjas in a pipe and just stab straight 22 times. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Oh, that is good. <laughs> I always think that's funny, the, the creating a kata thing. Because I, I think sometimes you can get into that feeling of, oh, that's not that hard to create a kata. And then you try to create one and you're like, wow, this is... Mine's terrible. <laughs> and it has to make sense? Jeez. I look terrible doing this. <laughs> and I designed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I feel like this is this one's just one of those ones. You know you're dealing with someone who you're not going to have an intelligent conversation with them about martial arts. They already are – I mean immediately by the nature of the comment, they're dismissive of it. Um. Uh, yeah, again, I, uh, this is one of those ones that's easy to say where I don't really think that there's a there's a, a good reply other than, you know, it's not meant to. Simple. I tend to answer things like that with other questions. Like I'll ask them and say, well, have push-ups ever made a better soldier uh, a better killer? And the answer is usually, well, no. I said, well, then why do we have people do push-ups? Yeah, you, you challenge them with logic. <laughs> Haha, take that. Oh, and that, that's, that's terrible. You can just see the wind go out of their sails when, they have, when you turn a question back on them. Yeah, that's the Ike in me. Yeah. <laughs> as long as they're not resisting, man, that's all that matters. I feel like there's a light bulb joke in there somewhere. Light bulb. You know, how, many, how many Aikidoka does it take to screw in a light bulb? And, and, and some, something about, you know, 
how much resistance is there? You know, the the, <laughs> it, the lamp would only work afterwards if, if somebody <laughs> you know was pushing it on them. I, 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 it's not fully fleshed out, but I think you get where I'm going. There well, is the an, there's the answers around there. The answer is five: one to do it, and four to tell them that wouldn't work. That's every martial art. <laughs> yes, that is every martial art. That's not that Aikido doesn't get to own that one entirely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we went through all this. We answered all these. Jared, hopefully, we got. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we we got some ways to kind of combat the uh, the bad questions. Well, big picture, Jared. What do you? You know, this is. Uh, we had some fun with some of these. Some of these were, you know, <clears throat> took us down a bit of a you know maybe a bad memory lane and things like that, but. As martial artists, I don't know how many times you've said it, Jared, uh, Jeremy, I, I know you've said it a lot. We've we've all talked about it a lot. We're an extremely small percentage of the population. And so by and large, most of the people we talk to are non-martial artists. And, you know, we're likely going to, you know, you're going to hear some of these things from time to time and. Um, some of them may be um, threatening or kind of just you you just realize I'm talking to a toolbox right now but um, but you know what do you think when you get some of these questions when you can maybe see sense that opening have a real conversation and maybe you open up the martial arts to them Right. That's always the question is, what are they actually asking about when they're asking? Are they asking to be a butt or are they asking to honestly ask a question? And if they are, let's say they are. Well, then you plant seeds. Um, unfortunately, and, and this is kind of weird coming from you know a podcast with two martial arts podcasters, but talking about martial arts doesn't really do anything. You have to go on the mat and do it. You mean you can't get a black belt through a podcast? If you want to send me nineteen ninety five, I'll give you one. <laughs> I'll do it for eighteen ninety five. Will you give it will you guarantee it? Will you guarantee it in twelve months? I'll guarantee it in twelve minutes. <laughs> oh, man. I will print your certificate for you. You're I won't do that. That that will eat my enough. profit. I'll send you a PDF. Oh, I can you print can... it myself, even better. You can print it on a post it. Put in your wallet, <laughs> but I feel like I feel like you know. I'll include the it, frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a better deal. <laughs> that is that. You know how much? How much extra is there? Is there an extra fee for that frame now? <laughs> well, you know, you know, get you come with the need on of that one, so. Uh, okay, okay. But I feel like, um, you know, I feel like my job, if I, if I'm going to call it a job, it, my my responsibility, I'll call it that. When I do sense that opening. I always try to want – I always want to see, you know, uh, to borrow a term, how deep the rabbit hole goes. How interested really are they in the martial arts? And if they are, maybe I – whether it's next the next day, the next week, next month, next decade. Maybe I was a little part of them finding their way to the thing that they were curious about however long ago when they talked to me. You know, the other part of that is if these are people that are probably never going to take a martial art by themselves, even just kind of creating a better educated society about what it is that we actually do has a benefit. Well, we are all ambassadors, aren't we? Essentially. And I, I as as we're talking about this, that's where I'm that's where I'm going with this. And, and I'm realizing that. I don't know that that is ever been put in any of the classes I've ever been in or, or whatever. I don't know if I've ever had that put to me in such a distinct way. You know, it's always, Hey, you know, be good outside this dojo. It reflects on us, but not so much as you are ambassador of martial arts or this particular style or this particular dojo. It's like, it's like, it's looking at it from the other direction and, you know, I kind of feel like 
that's a responsibility to be to be a good representative. Mm-hmm. We have enough bad examples out there. You can go find them on Google. It's not hard. Heck, when I started doing the positivity posts on Marshall Journal, yeah, plug. Anyway, <laughs> um, it took a while to adjust my Google feed to give me that stuff, to give me mm-hmm. good stuff. It was hard and, and in the beginning, and I had to kind of tweak the feeds here and there from time to time. But now I get now I get plenty, and you know I I, I like I'd rather read about that. I don't want to read about that one bad apple that's, you know, creating a bad name for martial arts in general and or his particular style studio system. There's enough of that. You know what I always found interesting about those is in the news articles, you know, why do they label them as martial artists? You know, if someone was a crocheter, they wouldn't list them as, you know, and part time crocheter, you know, who does these things. Because for all of the criticism and the sarcasm, people still believe that martial artists are a better breed of person. And so to that contrast of a martial arts school owner sexually abusing one of their students hits harder even to mm-hmm. not martial artists. Yeah. <laughs> We're all Mr. Miyagi. I want to be. <laughs> Get the car wax out. And the wood stain for the fence and the paint for the house will be good to go. All right. Um, Jared, do you have any closing thoughts? No, I think we've kind of covered it. Every, every kind of response we could think of the emotional part on ours, as well as the other person asking the question. So I, I think we've covered a lot with these. Jeremy, what about you? This has been interesting, and, and you know, I, I think anybody that's listened can tell that maybe this popped up some stuff for me that I hadn't expected, and I like that because I, I, I always encourage listeners to our show to think about the things that, you know, we talk about, and this has brought up some stuff that I need to go back and think about, because even mm-hmm. though the memories are there, uh, and even though... You know, there's a there's a lot of sarcasm and, and joking around these general things that we're talking about. I think I might have a little more work to do. Yeah, I, I I'd have to second that. Um, I was kind of, you know, you and you and I have discussed. Uh, I've messaged you privately about yeah. you know some things that you and I have shared similar experiences in our past and. Yeah, I was I was also likewise. I mean, I'm you know I'm writing these down. So I have them, you know, here in front of me and, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just writing them down, not thinking about, then we start talking about it. And it's, it's interesting how certain things can trigger something that you had almost forgotten about, or you hadn't seen or heard from, so to speak, in so many years that you forgot it was kind of forgot it was there. And, um, and sometimes a couple of things you said really, took me back to places and um yeah sorry i just yeah i can't uh i can't say i can't say much more than what you just said right there it's it's caused me to step back and think about where i'm at and you know some of those some of that old some of the old uh what is the uh, line from uh that rocky used in the rocky balboa you know the you know the uh stuff in the basement Mm. Yeah, big sucker for that movie, Rocky Balboa. It's got the best line ever about, you know, it's not about how hard you can hit, but how you know how how hard you can get hit and keep getting up. Oh, it's that line gives me tingles every time I hear mm-hmm. it. <laughs> so, all right, well, uh, gentlemen, I have had a fantastic time. Yeah, talking this has been to you. fun. Thanks for doing. I this. hope uh, absolutely. Um, I hope all the listeners enjoy this. Hope they have a good time with it. I hope that uh, even if it stirs up a few things, causes you to think like it's done for for us, you know, uh, that's all positive. So um, if we don't have anything else to say, I guess we can sign off. 